to you all thank you for joining me for this video i am mr ish it has been a while or perhaps a long time since we looked at anything with regards to pre-calculus especially trigonometry here very quickly at this video on periodic functions we have a specific task our task is we have to prove that sine and cosine are periodic functions the key word over here is basically this periodic functions what does periodic functions mean think about the actual sine and cosine and if you just home in on only a single function you know a sine function looks something like that it is a periodic function meaning there's a certain repetition which occurs with regards to the input and its resulting output if you have a specific value over here you know it will be repeated again here at a certain distance away from that point whether you're looking in this direction or you're looking in this direction you'll see the repeat over here there's a certain repetition which occurs with the sine and cosine here we're looking at a sine after a given period you can say 2 pi on this side and 2 pi minus on that side given a certain integer which you are looking at there's always a repetition of values how can you go about showing that sine and cosine are indeed periodic functions it has very well much to do with this whole concept of this cyclical pattern and how the period comes into play for both of these functions. If you know that for both the sine and the cosine, at a given value, the next value, assuming there has been no alteration of the basic sine and cosine, that the next value is always a given period, a constant period away, and we know the period here is 2 pi, that right there is the period of a sine and a cosine and you know 2 pi is representing 360 degrees this right here is in the radian format you can very well address this specific property right here sine of any value you know it could be an x value that you're looking at will always be 2 pi from the next value and that would equal to your original value because of the repetition or the repetitive nature of the sine and the cosine you could very well have brought in a cosine here as well too because they're both very similar. The sine of a specific value is exactly the same as the sine of that same value but 360 degrees away. You can prove it to be the case simply by employing the sum property or the sum identity of sine and cosine. Think about sine x plus y cosine x plus y that's exactly what you have here. Sine x plus 2 pi would be you looking at something like this, sine x cosine 2 pi plus sine 2 pi cosine x and you would simplify that and likewise here cosine x plus 2 pi cosine of a given value by means of it being a periodic function it should equal to the next value which is 2 pi away, 2 pi radians away it would be cosine x cosine 2 pi minus sine x sine 2 pi and you don't have to do anything other than just simplify this when you have a sine 2 pi over here this zero is all out when you're looking here at a sine 2 pi this is zeroing everything out you're looking right over here cosine 2 pi is equal to a 1 which is just equal to sine x so you're showing that sine x plus 2 pi is indeed equal to sine x as we're seeing over here when you focus in over here we zeroed this out you're looking here at 2 pi which is just a 1 it keeps that cosine x and you're showing that cosine x is indeed equal to that so you're proving that the sine and the cosine are indeed periodic functions now that we've seen this we can take this one step further and additionally prove the fact that sine and cosine are periodic functions we can just pick one single function we don't have to pick both i'll just pick sine you can do exact same for cosine you can elaborate everything as such sine x would equal to you'll see here sine x but now 2 pi n We'll bring here n. n can be any integer. It could be a positive or minus integer. For any of these positive minus integers, it should be still the same result because again, it's a periodic function. They're repetitive values, which are all the same because you land on the same point on that curve as you go in the right or towards the left direction. When you're looking at it in this way, you don't have to put a plus or minus here. The n, if it's a minus, it'll bring a minus over here. If it's a positive, it'll retain that. Here in this specific instance, you're looking when you expand this out, you're looking at sine x, but you're looking at cosine 2 pi n. And then you're looking here at a sine 2 pi n, and then cosine x. By its very nature, this right here will zero out sine, which will zero out all of this, and you'll be left with nothing but that. Cosine 2 pi n, no matter what the n value is, it'll always bring you on the same point on the cosine, such that you'll always end up here with a value of a 1. And this will always translate into a sine x. 
and you've shown that sine x for this is equal to sine x because you're seeing it. It doesn't matter what that n value is. You can pick an n value of a 7 and hit it with 360 degrees and you can do cosine and you'll get a 1. You can pick an n value of like minus 19 and hit it with 360 and you can cosine it and you'll end up with a 1. So this part here, no matter what the n value is, so long as it's a it's an integer, you'll always end up with a 1 here which will retain the sine x. So sine x is equal to sine x by means of this periodic property becoming true and proving to be true. You can do the exact same exercise for cosine on your own if you want, but I won't do it. Now in the remainder of this video, I'll show you yet another way of doing this. The original way I've shown you in the previous part of this video, now let me show you a second way, and that will involve the unit circle. You know what the unit circle is. It's a way of relating trigonometry to this whole concept of circles. You have a specific circle here. You know the radius is always r, whatever that might be, you have a specific point here, x comma y. You can draw a right triangle with the theta, you have an x, you have a y, and you have the r, the radius. You have a very good representation. x always ends up here being by means of trigonometric functions. You know cosine theta is equal to x over r. You know sine theta here is equal to y over r. Looking in each of these cases here, x is equal to r cosine theta, y is equal to r sine theta. Remember we're showing you how these are indeed a periodic functions, both cosine and sine. If you were to look at this same representation right here, I'm showing you this and you have this little point. You were looking at this specific point on your circle. Here's my circle. I'm just showing you part of it. If you were to add a two pi degrees, which we're looking here, that the periodicity of the sine and the cosine is two pi. If you were to add two pi degrees, this point will be exactly on the same point on that circle. It's just like a a wheel, you have a specific point, it rolls around. When it rolls around a full turn, you're still looking at that same point in the same position. That's exactly what you're talking about. When you're doing an extra rotation here of 2 pi, which is your period, you're looking here now exactly at this. X is now is equal to R, but cosine theta plus 2 pi. Because now I'm looking at that same angle, but I've added 2 pi because of the period. And here Y becomes R sine theta plus 2 pi. In each of these individual instances utilizing this concept of unit circle, you could very well expand this out. Whatever you expand out and you obtain should equal this, then it should show you the fact that the periodic function concept for sine and cosine is very well proven. And I will show you, here you get r. You have to expand this out using the sum formula for each. You'll have r times cosine theta cosine 2 pi minus sine theta and sine 2 pi. Here you'll have r, you'll have a sine theta and cosine 2 pi. You could have even put n's over here, your integers. I'm not doing that, but you could have. And then here you'll have a sine 2 pi and then cosine theta. When you expand each of these and you simplify them, here the 2 pi in terms of the sine will always zero this out. Here this will always zero out because the sine 2 pi is always zero. From here then you're left with an r cosine theta, which is exactly what we wanted right here r cosine theta. From here, cosine 2 pi is always the one you left here with the r sine theta, which is exactly what we need to show you. x is equal to r cosine theta, x is equal to r cosine theta, even with the addition of a 2 pi. y is equal to r sine theta, y is equal to r sine theta. Here, even with the addition of 2 pi, you could put n's over here and the result is still the same. So I have indeed shown you to be the case that sine and cosine are periodic functions. And let's end the video with that. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.